there's not one element, not one facet of this uh, space that uh, uh, I'm, I'm leaving uh, unturned here. Uh, I feel like this is a generational opportunity for entrepreneurs and investors. And uh, I quite frankly have not seen something as exciting in my entire investment career. My name is Matthew Rozek. I'm co-founder and chairman of Block. Block is an enterprise software company, and we build blockchain networks for leading companies worldwide. I've been in the venture capital business uh, for 20 years and also co-founded six enterprise software companies. I originally came across Bitcoin in 2011 when I was chairman of a social gaming company in Southeast Asia. And uh, when you're in social gaming, payment processing, cross-border payments becomes a core competency very quickly. So when you're moving money from Korea to Philippines to Indonesia to Malaysia, um, you start paying attention to uh, costs uh, and friction of PayPal and credit cards and, and what have you. And so when Bitcoin comes on the scene, uh, I, I did what most people uh, uh, do the, the, fir the first moment they are exposed to Bitcoin. I discounted it. I thought this was silly internet money. You could mine it. It's like a, a golden goose. Uh, and uh, uh, it took me about a year uh, to really uh, re-explore the technology. And so by 2012, um, I did what I tell most people to do today is turn off your phone, lock your door, and study this technology for a day. It's the best advice I could give. Blockchains are networks, and networks um, that we see today, uh, Alibaba, uh, Airbnb, uh, Uber, uh, those are interesting networks, but they're centralized networks. Here, you're going to have networks that are decentralized, that are uh, working more on a, a, as a cooperative. Um, I think the, 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 some of the challenges will be what are the economics of those networks, what are the economics of certain blockchains versus today's discussion, which is all about the technology. I think tomorrow's discussion will be about uh, how do you build network effects off of these new railroads. I think there's going to be a lot of disruption, a lot of revolution with respect to blockchain-based technologies. And um, what, what that's going to drive is, is not necessarily uh, uh, banks uh, worrying about other banks being competitors. Uh, what, what banks worry about is the, uh, is the bank of one, you know, the, the next generation of, of, of a banking network that's uh, resident on, on a phone that's decentralized, that's distributed, and uh, is, is based on a, on a digital token, a digital asset that's not actually issued by a bank or a government or, or anybody else. So it creates all these different uh, permutations and opportunities, uh, not only for enterprises and governments, but also for, uh, for society. And uh, right now, you know, it, it's, it's not that difficult to, to, to go into a coffee shop or buy a pair of jeans with, with uh, the credit cards and all the, the kind of banking infrastructure that I have. But if you're a goat herder in Ghana, if you're a, a taxi driver in Indonesia, um, you have uh, no access to the, the global financial system. And so having, uh, you know, what, what you do have is you have a, a supercomputer in your pocket. And so with that, it opens up um, a, a incredible financial sovereignty where you can connect to the global financial network by having some digital currency in your pocket. If you look at uh, what internet did to media and communications, uh, blockchain will do to uh, banking, insurance, capital markets, and a hundred other industries whereby the movement of value uh, is now going to be done on new railroads. Uh, there's railroads are being built on top of the internet. And what, that, what that's going to do is, is provide uh, current network operators. So, so think of um, not necessarily how do banks innovate and kind of replumb themselves, but think about how uh, those networks, those blockchain-based networks, are used for payment rails within Facebook, within Alibaba, within Amazon. And they will provide payment layers as enhancements to their networks. So these will be just service layers where, uh, on one hand, they may not care about banking and payments and some of those fees and, and be uh, apt to give those away for free to harden their networks and create network effects within their um, pool of customers. So if you look historically at the internet, uh, the internet was a very thin protocol and a lot of the value was captured in the application layer. So think uh, Google, Amazon, Facebook, and uh, hundreds of billions of dollars were, were uh, put on top of that railroad. 
uh, in the blockchain railroad, if you have something like Bitcoin and you have a digital token, the protocol is actually, and, and the equity token within that protocol gets very valuable the more applications you put on it, the more throughput, the more uh, velocity and volume you, you put on that protocol. So you have thinner uh, application values and uh, very thick and fat um, protocol values. And so you're seeing this uh, in, in Bitcoin, which is a $15, $20 billion uh, uh, baby uh, protocol currency. Uh, you have this in, in Ethereum, which is about a billion. But as these things continue to gain adoption and traction uh, you know, uh, and value, these protocols can be worth uh, hundreds of billions, if not trillions of dollars, depending on what applications they wind up securing. And so from an investment standpoint, um, back in the late 90s, if you're saying internet search is, is going to be a big deal, and, and we had uh, Google uh, and Ask Jeeves in front of us, uh, and, and we picked Ask Jeeves, uh, we could have been right on the space and wrong on the horse. In uh, these new protocol networks where you have a digital token and an equity share, in that cooperative and that network uh, that you're involved in, you get to participate in that uh, in that value, which is, from a technology standpoint, it's, it's pretty unprecedented. If you're a intermediary, if you're a, a middleman for, uh, in the case of the insurance industry or the banking industry, uh, there's a moment in time where you're gonna uh, have to present in front of your board and say, the center of what we do, the center of how we make money is now free. That's the bad news. The good news is we've built these concentric circles of other service layers and other ways in which to, to remain relevant and uh, build and leverage off of our network and our regulatory edge and our brand and either be a network operator, a network participant, and really play through this, this evolution of blockchain technology as it disrupts uh, the, the middle piece of, uh, of what these intermediaries do.